Welcome to a new video. Today I have another thing I want to present you and this is a new sharp sword. So as you know, here comes a disclaimer first, as you know, I really prefer um, swords with a basket hilt, uh, or at least with some solid hand protection. It's just my personal favorite, no matter if it is a shorter blade, like the Alehaus dagger, if it is a cutlass with a basket hilt uh, hand protection, or uh, of course uh, a sword, and even long swords I prefer uh, with these kind of half basket, which we can find. Um, that being said, um, Nevertheless, I'm really interested in swords which are part of Scottish and Irish history or Gaelic history. Scottish two-handed great swords are really interesting and even there um, I prefer the clamshell claymore even though the, the original two-handed great sword, the typical two-handed great sword from Scotland is beautiful and is also a, a very important uh, and awesome weapon. However, my personal taste, you know me, is of course uh, a good solid protection for the hand. And the same is true for um, one-handed swords. I really like uh, Irish ring pommel swords and early medieval uh, Scottish swords which were used uh, partly right up to into the 16th century uh, by the by the Galloglass mercenaries in Ireland. Um, and uh, I really like the uh, Norse or Viking influence on these sword types a lot. Um, no matter if it's really one-handed sword or if you can call it a half-length sword, so like uh, a bastard sword, something sort of this. And that is the reason why I always uh, look out for these weapons as well. Um, now, this was really a coincidence. I found this sword online because I searched for a completely different sword. Not to, you know, get one, but just out of curiosity, because I saw a video of um, two guys sparring with uh, Black Fencer versions of this weapon, and uh, I just, you know, had some time, wanted to Google a little bit about this weapon. And this weapon is the Italian Cinque Dea. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. In German, by the way, we call it uh, Ochsenzunge, so Ox Tongue, which is also a cool name. Um, but uh, in Italian, it's this Cinque Dea short sword of the Renaissance. Um, and I remember that there was a replica um, made by Windless Steelcrafts. Um, and I just, you know, searched for it out of curiosity. And then I found a really interesting sword. And this is it. This is another windless Cinque Dea. At least they call it that. But I have to say, even though it has some features similar to a Cinque Dea, in my opinion, it's not. It's, it's something else. And I was really quickly hooked when seeing this because... This is really a solid blade. I mean, I can understand why they call it Cinque Dea because it has a very broad base at the cross guard and forward sloping U-shaped uh, uh, cross guard. But that's that's it. That's in, from what I know about these Italian short swords, that is the only similarity we can find. Similarity we can find here. And even though it's not the longest one hand sword, it's like um, 84, 85 centimeters in overall length. I think it's a, it's a solid uh, length for what you could call an early medieval sword, an arming sword, maybe even a Viking sword. Let's go a little bit deeper into that topic. Oh, nice sound. I got hooked by this sword because I um, remembered in my collection of grave slabs, where you know, like tombstones from Scotland and Ireland, where you often see um, Highland warriors of the medieval period being depicted. Um, I remembered um, a, a particular interesting sword um, which I found on a, on a grave slab in, uh, in Northern Ireland in, uh, in, in Donegal. And uh, this uh, grave slab is in, uh, in a ruined church um, and it is depicting not only a hurling or shinty stick um, for, for the ball game and a ball, but also a sword. And this sword really much looks very, very similar to this one. And I found that sword on this grave slab interesting because it reminded me of another sword, which uh, is called the Carwood sword, which was found in England and which is said to be uh, early medieval, um, maybe even late Viking 
or Viking influenced sword. Um, and, and it belongs to a family of sword types. Uh, I don't want to go too much into these oak shot sword types and everything because that's not really my field. But as far as I understand it, um, you can find this Viking influenced swords, call it like this, or early medieval swords with these features. Um, you can find some examples or similar examples uh, which were found in, in different parts of England. And it's said that this is the early medieval arming sword, which was used in, in, in the, during the period, having these um, still quite Viking-ish uh, features. And interestingly, there was one sword also found in um, Norway, which uh, has the same features and resembles the same style of sword with this uh, U-shaped cross guard and this beautiful, um, I don't know what it's called, uh, this two beautiful type of pommel down here. Many, you know, connections, many different pieces of a puzzle. And most interesting for me is this grave slab um, or uh, yeah, this, this tombstone in, in, in Donegal because it belongs to one um, Magnus MacOriston or is, is a grave of Magnus MacOriston. And um, he is said to have been a Hebridean originating from the, from the Hebridean islands, um, a gallo glass mercenary. And this sword is depicted on his uh, tombstone and his his grave slab is from the 15th century. Um, so really, really interesting uh, having this type of early medieval, you know, Scandinavian influenced uh, English sword type um, on this grave slab. And I also uh, looked at other grave slabs and I found other um, swords often described as claymores uh, on uh, um, Scottish grave slabs, um, which also look very similar to this one. As I said, it is not a 100% reproduction. Wintlers wanted to do a Cinque Dea. Don't know why they came up with this. However, uh, it is not a 100% reproduction of any of the historical sorts I mentioned, but it resembles them quite well. And also it uh, has many similarities with different types of arming swords, because we know there were arming swords which had very broad blades in, in the base and, and which were similar to a Mainz Gladius, a little bit uh, curved and then get slender to the point. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert in arming swords, but you find similar ones um, from the blade profile. Um, yes, as I said, check out the Patreon link below and you will find more information on that. Now for the sword itself, it is well made. You know, windless is always a 50-50% chance that you get a wonderful sword or wonderful dagger and 50% chance that you get total crap. I don't know what Windless is doing wrong with the swords they're doing wrong, but they do many swords quite very wrong, so like unwieldy pieces of steel. And then they have swords like, like this one and many others, which are just, wow, great, especially for the price. Um, the blade is carbon steel, whatever that means. Uh, when they write carbon steel, it has, uh, it is quite thin. It's not, uh, it's thin and broad. It has deep fuller, a deep, deep broad fuller. It's quite flexible has a good uh, point of percussion. It has also a good point of balance, which is, which is like, like here, where my little, where my pinky finger is, okay? That's, I think, okay, because, you know, I prefer swords with a solid um, hand protection or a basket tilt, and they have always the point of balance further back towards the handle, towards the basket tilt, and here it's also because the, the pommel is quite massive and the cross guard is, is quite massive and the broad, the base of the blade is quite broad. And so the point of balance is around here, which is, I think, a good balance. It's very swift. It has still authority in the cut and in the thrust. I will do some test cutting in future with that, but from, from wielding it and just cutting in the air, it already feels quite good, quite solid. Not clumsy, not heavy 
but with authority. So this is really a sword where you said, okay, this is made for cutting, this is made for fighting, this is, feels really good in the hand. Um, as I said, the blade is sharp, um, the point is not too broad and not too slim, so it has a good solid point for thrusting. The grip is wrapped with leather, with an interesting uh, pattern. Um, don't know if it's real leather. Um, I uh, opened, I, I uh, unscrewed the pommel because the, the tang is screwed um, and I checked it and, and the uh, grip is wood covered with leather. <clears throat> the cross card has a typical U shape. It's not as long as on the cardboard sword, but you can see it's it's a U shaped pommel. Uh, sorry, U shaped cross guard. The pommel is this typical Norse Viking whatever style. Um, I think I saw examples where the pommel is made of two parts, so the U shaped part here and this crown shaped part here. This is one solid piece. I don't know if it makes any difference. Um, but it's, you know, massive enough uh, uh, to give a good counterbalance to the blade. Um, as I said, the tang is screwed. Um, I have to say, there it would have been a little bit better uh, if they would have made it like that you sink the, the, the tang screw a little bit into the pommel. But then again, the pommel is, the, the screw in the tang is wide and as wide as a pommel. So for the price, I would say this is really a minor aesthetic detail. So that's totally okay. Uh, everything is very tight. Everything fits very well together. The grip also sits perfectly in the hand. Um, I did not have too much um, one-handed medieval swords in my hands, no originals and, and also not too many reproductions. But from what I know, quite often in reproductions, you find grips which are meant to be used one hand but then they are too long or they are too tight and the pommel cuts in your hand. I had a viking sword which was generally a nice not too too, too uh, um, expensive reproduction and that pommel really was cutting into the hand because the edges were too sharp and it was a little bit too tight. Uh, I have uh, average sized or average big hands like glove size, uh, large, extra large, somewhere in between. So for my hand, it's perfect. Um, even with a padded glove, I don't know if it would work so good with an armored glove, but with a simple padded glove, this sits really tight in my hand with really good control. Um, the, the, the pommel, because of the, the curve here, it doesn't cut in your hand. You have freedom of movement. You can do different uh, hand positions, different grips, and you can really maneuver the sword quite well with this with this handle. The sheath is just simple. I don't know if it has a plastic core or not. I think it's just it's just quite thick leather. No clue if it's real leather or artificial leather, but it's you know beautiful enough. Um, I think. What is interesting, I had this type of sheath on a windless, um, they call it a gladius, but it's more like a gladius style short sword um, with a wooden handle. A really nice blade. Um, I showed it, I put it on my alehouse dagger. I don't have it here, but I have put it on my alehouse dagger. Uh, you might remember that. And the blade is also really nicely made, not, not like many uh, gladius uh, reproductions where you can find in many shops um, that, the, that the, the blade is just too heavy and too thick and this was really a good like a little bit more like a gladiator sword with some fantasy elements but it was really a nice sword and I don't know what production line of um, wind glass it, that is and I don't know if they offer more of these type of swords but these are really great swords they are uh, simple still aesthetic they are nicely made and um, they are well balanced and, and, and the, this Gladius styled uh, was also quite affordable. I think like maybe 60 euros without sharpening. With sharpening it was like 80 euros. So this is really also a great price. I get a lot of sword for that. Good solid short sword with also good thrusting and cutting abilities. And the same is true for this one, even, even more so. I mean, this is even more spectacular than, than the other one. Um, and I just recognized the, the, the style of the sheaths because the, these so-called gladius, they offer also has these 
mix of brown um, and, and black leather on a simple cheese. Um, so I have to find out more about this. Uh, maybe this is a complete production line. Maybe it's only these two sorts. I have no clue. Maybe you know more. So let me know in the comments below. This was a quick review. Um, as I said, you can read more details and more historical background on these type of sorts in my Patreon article, which is linked down below. Thanks, by the way, to all patrons supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate your help. You make things like this possible, and I hope I can give you back something with that. Um, I can highly recommend this sort. If you search for uh, early medieval Viking-ish, uh, arming sword-ish, um, and probably somewhere connected to the Gallo Glass and, and uh, just the West Highland and, and Island Warriors of Scotland, then this is, I think, a nice option for a sharp sword especially for the for the money um i think that i think there are much more expensive and much more worse sorts out in the market than this one so highly recommend it what else can i say if you like it i can only say grab one it's great so thanks for watching see you in the next video